Everybody praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. All of us who are here, all those in various locations in Cameroon, all the various uh, locations and uh, congregations in Africa and beyond Africa. It's a great joy to be with you again. Today we're talking of power. Everybody shout power. It will come upon you today. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege. Thank you for the opportunity to come before you to receive your power. We're asking, Lord, that nobody will miss your power this day in Jesus' name. Envelope us with your power. Put within us the power to do the ministry and to accomplish the ministry. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you. You can sit down. We're starting with Luke chapter 24. And I'm reading to you from verse 49. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. It says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But hurry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Until you be endued, be enveloped, and be surrounded, and be filled with power from on high. That's the promise Jesus gave to all the disciples, all the apostles. If you were there at that time, that's the promise he'll give you. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he said, What two or three are gathered in my name, I am there with them. And he's giving you the same promise today. He says, Tarry ye in Jerusalem to pray. Until ye be endued with power from on high. You see the center and you see the importance of that verse is the power. It's not just ordinary power. Power from on high. Power from heaven. Why? Every other power, every other country or contrary power that will try to negate you, that will try to oppose you, that will try to hinder your ministry is below. Anywhere your ministry is planted, the powers that will try to kind of push you back is power below and as God is higher than man so heaven is higher than earth and the power you receive power from on high is as high as heaven is higher than earth all the power of the earth below cannot hinder you to succeed and Jesus said I said 
as the Father sent to him, he also is sending us and is sending the promise and the power with us. Everyone God called to any special ministry, anyone God called, called to salvation, called to service, he always sends them with power. Anytime, every time. The plan of God has not changed. The program of God has not changed. And the purpose of God has not changed. When he calls you, he calls you, sends you forth, he always sends with power from on high. And so we're talking today on divine empowerment for a fruitful ministry. Don't forget, he has called you into ministry. Don't forget, his plan, his purpose is for a fruitful ministry in your life. Don't forget, when he says, he always sends the promise and the power. Don't forget the power is from on high. It will defeat, it will destroy every other power below, every other power on earth. Instead of having point one, point two, point three. I'm going to use the letters of that word power. P, prevailing power. Penetrating power. Number two, O, is the overcoming power. Number three, W, is the wonder walking power. Number four, that is E, explosive power. And R, reviving power. Once we have all that, we have everything, go and succeed. The penetrating power prevails. The overcoming power overcomes, overthrows. The walking, the wonder walking power witnesses. And explosive power expels every evil spirit before you. The reviving power rekindles the saints and the sinners you are ministering to. Point number one, P, penetrating power for, to prevail on sinners. Number two, overcoming power to overthrow by the Spirit. Number three is wonder walking power to witness what signs and wonders. Number four, explosive power to expel every evil spirit. Number five, reviving power to rekindle the saints. And what we're looking at, you're not just hearing, you're comprehending, you're understanding, and you're having it inside you, the power from on high will be yours today in Jesus' name. Number one is penetrating power to prevail on sinners. That power comes upon you. It penetrates you. 
it pervades every area of your inner life the power affects your heart affects your soul affects your spirit the power penetrates you completely any contrary thing in you before the power comes penetrates you prevails upon your life drives every negative thing away and you prevail in ministry look at how it worked in other people's lives in micah chapter 3 verse 8 it says, but really, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. That's an Old Testament preacher. Old Testament prophet. Old Testament proclaimer. It said, I am full. He didn't say, I was full. There were people who were full, but now they are no more full. In our younger years as believers, in our younger years, when we received the ministry, we prayed, we sought the Lord, we wanted the power from on high. We looked at the wider than experience greater than our strength we were almost intimidated that how are we going to do it because of that we ran to the lord because of that we sought the lord some of us even prayed were fasting we looked up to god oh god this is greater than who i am and as we were seeking the face of the Lord, He filled us with the Spirit, the Spirit of power. And we can easily say at that time, I was full of power. As years went on, our prayer life became lessened. Our concentration on the word of God became less. I was seeking the face of God in heaven, Lord. Our passion for the power of God also was fizzling away. To the point now we feel shallow. We feel empty. We feel weak. We look at our challenges more than we look at our Christ. And, and so we cannot say with Micah, I am full of power. We can only say, I was in the past full of power. How do we come to say like him? I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. We allow the Spirit to come back and convict us. And show us the carelessness, the superficiality, the frivolity, the fleshly life that have come in and driven away the fullness of power. We're still in the kingdom. We're still ministers of God. God is still going to use us. But the Spirit of God is saying, return to the good old days. When you are serious, when you are consecrated, when you surrendered all, when you knew the Lord, when you had passion to work for the Lord. When you woke up early in the morning. And you saw the face of the Lord. Return. 
return to the time when you were intimate and fresh of the Lord. Return to the time when you are tears at the altar. Return to the time when you are pleading with the Lord, Oh Lord, use me. And you come with conviction. And you come with passion. And you come with a desire. And as you are praying, the fire then began to burn. As you are praying, the Spirit of God came upon you in a way you never expected. And the Spirit of the Lord brought power in your life, in your ministry. And the Lord gave you assurance and conviction. And everywhere you went, the power of God was overflowing. And thank, thank God is waiting for us today. The fire will burn again. The flame will shine again. The glory will return again. And then you'll be able to say, I am full of the power of the Spirit. And of judgment and of might. To declare unto Jacob his transgression. That's the power. If you're going to declare to them their transformation, you must have the power and the courage to declare unto them their transgression. You cannot declare transformation until you have declared their transgression. You cannot declare their translation from darkness to light until you have declared their transgression. You cannot declare their triumph in Christ until you have declared their transgression against Christ. And so Micah said, I am full of power. A power by the Spirit of the Lord and of judgment and of might, of courage and a strong backbone. And then of the might of the strength of the Spirit. And that power of the Spirit is to declare, is to proclaim unto the nation of Israel, his own congregation, their transgression, to Israel, their sin. That's what happened in the New Testament. Acts chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 37. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Now, when they heard this, that's what Peter had declared and proclaimed and preached. When they heard this, they, they were preached in their hearts. The word of God from Peter penetrated their heart. Is the power to penetrate the hearts of all our hearers. A few weeks ago, those people said crucify Christ. A few days ago, they said, we don't care about judgment, about damnation. Let his blood come upon us. A few weeks ago, they said, we don't accept him as Savior. Crucify him. But Peter and the rest of the apostles had power, penetrating power. To prevail on those sinners. And when the Holy Ghost came upon them, 
the power of the Spirit came upon them. It changed their personality. It changed their proclamation. It changed their purpose. It changed the passion of their lives. It changed their productivity in ministry. And Peter in the power of the Holy Ghost gave the first message. It penetrated their hearts and it convinced them of their guilt. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? It's the same thing the Lord is doing today. As he baptizes us with power. As he mercies us in power. As he envelopes us with power. As he clothes us with power. The power to penetrate the heart of every man. I told you. That when God sends anyone into ministry, it sends him or power. The power that prevails, the power that turns everything around. Can I remind you of the example of Moses? The Lord sent him to Egypt. As the Lord has sent you where you are now. In Egypt, there was an emperor that said, No. Let my people go, no. Release them from slavery, no. But the power that God had given Moses was greater than any no from anybody on earth. There were magicians there. The magicians imitated the miracle of Moses and Aaron. They might imitate you. They might mock you. But the power from on high is greater, is higher, is more powerful and more penetrating than the power from below. The magicians couldn't stop or hinder or retard or destroy the ministry of Moses that had power. There were threats against Moses. Moses, don't come here again. The next day, if you come next time, you lose your life. The threats of Egypt could not stop, could not destroy the power that was given to Moses. And Christ is still the same. And God is still the same. And he is the one sending you forth now. And he sends you forth with power. Opposition will not hinder you. Criticism will not hinder you. Imitation and mocking will not hinder you. Magic and magicians will not hinder you. Idolatrous worship in that place will not hinder you. And the defiance of the people there, whether the old people, young people, religious people, will not stop you. Because they didn't hinder Moses that God sent to a power. The power penetrated Egypt and prevailed over every form of opposition. Sometimes what happens is we have opposition. They try to hinder us with the power from below. Natural power, 
tribal power, human power. And we also were resort to the power of the human being. Whatever language they use, we use the same language back to them. Whatever action or reaction they have, we also develop our own action, reaction similar to theirs, and we get it back to them. They fight us with human weapon. We also bring out a human weapon and fight against them. We are parallels. And because we are parallels, nobody overcomes. And the fighting continues for a long time. But while they're using their human power, power on earth, power below, we go to our closet in prayer and we get power from on high. And once you come out from that chamber, everybody, they fizzle away and flee away because the power from on high is greater than the power from below. So as Peter preached in the power of the Spirit, they said to him and to the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Look at verse 38. In verse 38, then Peter said unto them, Peter said unto them, just some weeks ago, Peter could not stand before a little maid. A little maid stood aright and stood upright and stood with all a ladyish kind of uh, stamina and said, you must be one of them. And Peter bowed and became stronger and he said, no, I am not. If, if all the power we have is the power on earth, the power below, and the power of the human being, when they challenge us, we we'll shrink. Even those who are younger than we are, even those who are ladies and we are men, when they confront us, we'll be afraid, we'll be intimidated, we'll shrink, we'll say, no, I am not, no, I, don't, I didn't come here to confront anything or anyone. But when the path from on high comes, we will prevail over every one of them. And so Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then in verse 39. It says, for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And then in verse 41. Verse 41 tells us, Then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 30,000 souls. Number one, penetrating power to prevail on sinners. Number two is the letter O. 
overcoming power to overthrow by the Spirit. Overcoming power. Uh, whenever there is any challenge in our lives, it's either we are overcome or we overcome. After, it's either we're defeated or we defeat the opposition. Once again, when two people are fighting for something, any fight? Yes. Satan is fighting to possess forever the souls of those people. You in Christ, Christ in you, you're fighting to possess those same souls for Christ. And as you are fighting, understand that satanic power is higher than ordinary human power. And you are fighting for the same kind of people. If all you have is human power, if all you have is language power, if all you have is the power of your stamina, if all you have is monetary power, if all you have is a political power, Satan's power is higher than all that. It turns heart to darkness. It destroys hearts with lives of sin. It grabs them, holds them down. And so if all you have is human power, or you have is power of education, power of the use of language, the power of the wisdom of man, the one who is fighting for the same soul that you are fighting for to possess for Christ, he is higher than all that. The power of the air, of the sky. But when you go beyond that, and you wait upon the Lord, and He saturates you with power, He fills you with power, He energizes you with power, and He sends the power from on high upon your life. Then you are going to have overcoming power to overthrow by the spirit that fills and baptizes you. In Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 9, then the Lord put his word, put his hand and touched my mouth. The hand of the Lord is the power of the Lord. The power of the Lord is the flame of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is the fire of the Holy Ghost. The hand of the Lord is the overpowering, overwhelming agency that transforms your life and your personality and transforms you completely. And so the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. My words in thy mouth. As the heaven is higher than the earth. So the word of the Lord in Jeremiah's uh, mouth was greater than the words of any man, any woman, anywhere, everywhere. Mm -hmm. 
And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. The spirit and the scripture, they walk together. His word and his wonders, they walk together. When the word of God is put in your mouth, in your heart, in your spirit, in your brain, in your personality, you are higher than anyone having the words of men on earth. When the words came, the wonder came. When the word came, the miracles came. When the word came, conviction, courage from heaven also came. It brought overpowering, overcoming a stature to the man. And now with the word in his mouth and the spirit in his life, Look at the next verse in verse 10. It says, See, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. Jeremiah was just a little child. If he depended on the power human, he cannot do anything in the nations and the kingdoms. If he depended on the horizontal power, man to man, here is what we have, here is what I have, he's much younger than all the people he was going to, he was going to minister to, he would not have had overcoming power. If he had depended on only the power, of education, if he had depended only on the power of college, the power of um, the power of training, training by human beings, he would not have been able to have overcoming power that overthrows everything, every hindrance by the spirit. <laughs> What experience does a little child have? If he had depended on the power of experience, he would not have been able to overcome in the ministry that God had given him. He depended on the overcoming power of the Spirit of God. And that's the calling we have today. That the Lord has called us. That we'll have the power. The power to fulfill the ministry he has called us to. The power of the Spirit. And that is the power that will overthrow every other negative power that may confront him. In number one, I told you about Moses. In number two, I'm talking about Joshua. To overcome all those tribes, to overcome all those Canaanites and the Hevites and the High and the Hivites, and to overcome everyone and to set up the kingdom of God in the land of Canaan, overthrowing power. Moses had only one Egypt to conquer. And the power of Pharaoh, just one king to conquer. <clears throat> Joshua had many nations in confederacy together against him. 
He had the wall of Jericho that nobody could penetrate by human power. He had all that against him too. He had the people that had been trained, trained to overcome any foreign enemy coming from anywhere. It's that overcoming power that got him through Jordan. It is that overcoming power that made him to be an instrument in the hand of God for Jericho wars to fall. It is that overcoming power that made them to defeat from city to city, from nation to nation, until the children of Israel were established in the land of promise. <clears throat> Superficial power would not have done that. Even ordinary association with Moses would not have done that. Because the needs in Canaan, they are greater, they are higher than the needs in the wilderness. And so the Lord is saying, there's no problem today we cannot overcome if we wait, if we tarry at the altar, in our chambers, in our, anywhere we are, in our Jerusalem, until the power from on high will come upon us. Number three, we're talking about the wonder-working power to witness with signs. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It says, but he shall receive power. You understand the emphasis of Christ? Knowledge is good. He didn't say he shall receive knowledge. Contacts, contacts are good. I want to do something. I have a project. I contact that man. I contact that woman. I contact the who is who in the land. All of them are still humans. Their powers are still human power. The experience is still human experience. The contact interaction they have, they are still human contacts. But we need power from on high. That will go beyond any power, any ability, and any skill or power below or power from earth. And so Jesus emphasized, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Even those opposers, even those who criticize, even those who have a contrary idea about your ministry, and they have opposed you in the past, when challenges rise in their lives, and they go here, they go here, and they contact human powers, and those human powers could not help them. Idea, an idea comes to them. I've been opposed to this minister, but now I've gone everywhere, and my problems are not solved. And they say that, you know, those Christian ministers, they don't bear grudges. If you go to them, they will forget whatever has happened, they'll help you. And so, they bring him to you. He said, preacher, pastor, prophet, I have a problem. And I've tried everything. 
and I didn't get solution. And you have the wonder walking power. I said you have the wonder walking power. And that wonder walking power will operate every day, every time, every moment in your life. You remember when you waited upon the Lord and the power came upon you. You became another man, another minister. You say, let us pray. You say, simple prayer. Short prayer. Straightforward prayer. You say, in Jesus' name, problem, you are solved. Wonder begins in the life of that man. He will submit to Christ. He will submit to you as his pastor prophet. Because he knows you carry the power from on high. He knows all the other people that you know oppose you. He will go to them and give testimonies to them. And they'll be coming, they'll be coming, they'll be coming. And your church will grow. I didn't hear your amen. And your ministry will go. And then finance will grow. And your joy in ministry will grow in Jesus' name. But he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Your local ministry will become a national ministry. Your local ministry will become a global ministry. Testimonies will go from one person to the other. They'll give your contact email, contact uh, telephone. They'll give it to people everywhere they contact others. Letters and uh, requests will be coming everywhere. The people you didn't know will know you because of the power from on high. And that power from on high will transform you and transform your ministry and change everything from ordinary to extraordinary. I spoke, I spoke about Moses, I spoke about Joshua, look at Elijah. Elijah had the wonder-working power. Think about it, without that power in his life, he couldn't have officiated or done any ministry successfully. The whole land had gone into worshipping Baal, an idol. The people of Israel had forsaken God and they were following the God of Jezebel. Ahab, the king of the land, Ahab was in the pocket of Jezebel. And they built the temples of Baal everywhere. There were 7,000 people in the land. I believe in God. I believe in God. They couldn't do anything in that nation of worshippers of Baal. Until somebody came that had wonder working power. And he said, why do you halt between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. But if it's Baal, then serve him. And he called the prophets of Baal into a contest. 
Make your sacrifice. And pray to your God, Baal. Let him bring fire from heaven. And then I will do my own. He was one person, one prophet, one preacher. He gives hundreds of false prophets. And they all set their altar. They put the sacrifice there. They cried the whole lot. They rolled, they caught themselves. All that is human energy. It is still power below, power on earth. They prophesied even. All that is still human power, power from below. At the time of the evening sacrifice, he said, you've had enough time. You've cried and shouted for more than one hour. Come aside. And then Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord. And then he said, pour water around everything. We're looking for fire. He said, put water there. Twelve barrels of water. And yet, now he came. No shouting. No screaming. No spinning and turning around. No rolling on the ground. No gymnastics. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Answer. Let these people know that I've done all this in your name. He was still praying that quiet prayer. He was still praying that power packed prayer and fire came out from heaven. That's the walking, that's a wonder walking power. And as we look at the life of Elijah, he had that wonder walking power everywhere. There was even a time of sitting on top of a mountain. And the wicked king wanted to kill him. But we were just sitting down there. He didn't make people to come down to protest and to riot. That will be human power. That will be the power from below. He sat down all alone. He didn't run around to people, come and support me, come and help me. This man wants to kill me, go and kill him before he gets to me. No, that will be power from below. And this king said, 50 people, and their leader go catch that man. I must deal with him. And the man was sitting down quietly and calmly. And the 50 people came and said, man of God. God, come down. We're going to take you to the king. You're confronting yourself, man to man, hand to hand. Come down. And the man didn't close his eyes, begin to shout, begin to curse, and begin to do all these gymnastics that people do. When you have the power, you don't need all those gymnastics. When you have good lungs, you breathe normally and you breathe calmly. When the normal blood is running in your veins, you don't need any other thing. The blood, the breath, everything will do what needs to be done. Today, today, 
should day to day for you. Wonder walking power will come in Jesus' name. So Elijah sat down there and he said, If I be a man of God, as you, the man of God, as you said, let fire come down from heaven and burn you up. No sacrifice. The sacrifice has been made. No altar. The altar had been arranged. No crying. We have done the crying in our inner chamber. And there is no fear of anything or fear of any man. The second group came, the same thing happened. The third group came up, the leader knelt down and said, spare my life. They will come to surrender to your Christ. They will submit all their charms, everything they have at your feet. And the Spirit of God said, the angel said, Elijah, don't sit down again, stand up, go with them. And he went with them. And the king that said, Bring him here, I will deal with him. When Elijah came, when he saw Elijah, he lost all his power. Said <laughs> Elijah said, I'm the one you are looking for. Can I tell you? This is what God had said. Elijah, because he was a wonder walking, powerful prophet, he was on top of every situation. Your time has come. Number four, explosive power to expel the evil spirits. Men and women in the world, they either have the human spirit or the evil spirit. Everyone that fights against you either has the human spirit or the evil spirit. The people that oppose you, they have courage. Was human courage. The people that oppose you, they have strategy. It's all human strategy. Those who fight against your progress in ministry, if there are many, they may have conspiracy. But human conspiracy. Every power that militates against you in the world is either human or devilish. Now, as God has sent you forth, human spirit is not as high as the spirit of God with power from on high. Evil spirits. And some of those evil spirits, we know, they may even have some esoteric knowledge and power. As Jesus went about, those people have been evil spirits. They said, We know you, you are the Holy One of Israel. Esoteric power. But Jesus had power from on high. And all the other powers, human or evil or devilish, everything down below. And the power from on high always overcomes the lower power, the human power, the earthly power. And 
And so if you carry power, the power of the Spirit, the power from on high, all the ordinary powers, all the human powers, all the esoteric power, all the evil power, all the, all the devilish power, the power from on high will conquer and overcome. And that's what you have. I said that's what you have. You see, when you have that power, the Lord will make you an overcomer. You'll be triumphant everywhere. Look at Paul. He's going to the place of prayer, the place of preaching. And look at this a lady there. He's shouting on top on the top of, of her voice. And as she saw Paul and Silas, he said, These are the men that show us the way of salvation. She had the power of divination, esoteric. And uh, when, if Paul did not have a higher power. That woman would be going to them, publicizing them. And so when Paul and Silas, when they go out of town, all the people will go to her because they'll think she was a partner to Paul and Silas. And everything will now gather crowds from the church, from the city, and go to her with the evil power. Explosive power to expel evil spirits. And Paul did not say, oh, I didn't know we're going to meet somebody like this. I didn't fast last week. I didn't wait on the Lord enough before coming to Philippi. Look at what I'm confronted with. No. I give unto you power. Say amen now. God gave you a hand. That hand is yours, whether you fast or not, whether you went to the chamber last week or not, the hand he has given you, that is there. God gave you brain. It's yours. You possess it. Whether you fast or not, what he has given you, you possess. As he gave you a hand, as he gave you feet, as he gave you blood in your veins, he has given you brain to think. And you possess them because they are given unto you. He gave you power. You possess that power. He gave Moses the power. He gave Moses the power. And Moses possessed that power. He didn't have to be fasting every day. His fasting was supernatural because he went to the top of the mountain. It was with God. When you are directly with God, you don't need water, you don't even need air, you don't need breathing, you don't need food, you don't need water, you don't need anything. But when he came back to the children of Israel, the power he had received remained with him. He gave Joshua power and the power remained with Joshua. He gave Elijah power, and the power remained with Elijah. Here comes Paul the Apostle. He gave him power. 
and the power remains with him. This day, you have power already. Tell them now. I said this day, they have a YouTube. They have power already. If women, you have power. And today, the power will increase. And so Paul turned to him and said, Evil spirit, come out of her. It, it came out immediately. Go with that power. Now, if you don't use your hand, I'll not know you have a strong hand. If you don't stand on your feet, I'll not know you have strong feet. If you don't use your brain, I will not know the college you went. If you don't use the power, I will not know that you have power, but you have power. Look at Mark chapter 16, verse 17. And this sign shall follow them that believe. And this sign shall follow them that believe. How do you understand signs following you? It's like your shadow following you. Why does your shadow, a shadow follow you? Because the sun is shining. If the sun does not shine, there's no shadow. If the sun is not shining on you, there's no shadow. But when you are walking during the day, and the sun is shining, your shadow appears and your shadow follows you. The shadow is not following you because of what your name is. The shadow is not following you because you went to college. The shadow follows you because the sun is shining. The signs and the wonders follow us because we believe in the sun of righteousness. That sun of righteousness has healing in its wings. And because you believe in him, and the sun of righteousness is showing, it's following you, shining upon you. Signs and wonders will follow you. Don't worry, if the shadow there, it's there. Look at the sun. Don't worry, signs and wonders follow me. Don't worry, look at him, Christ, the same Jesus. The sun of righteousness is shining. Signs and wonders will follow you. These signs shall follow them. Not one sign, these signs of healing, different, different sicknesses, plural, these signs of casting out the legion, these signs, plural. Miracles in nature, miracles for man, miracles for every need, plural. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they cast out devils. Plural, devils. 
any city, there's a special devil there, you get there, you will cast out devils. You go to another city, it's a different devil here. This one is powerful. This one is traditional. And this one is long-standing. Devils, plural, you'll cast out devils there. The, the devils that hold people back from believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will cast out them devils. And it says, and they shall speak with new tongues. New tongues. Say amen. amen. There is speaking in tongue that edifies you, that refreshes you. But there's another kind of tongue the tongue of power, the tongue of love, the tongue of assurance, the tongue of confidence, the tongue of power. That one affects people beyond yourself. The speaking in tongues that refreshes you and that energizes you. And then when you go from there and you come to the public and you are ministering, you're not speaking in tongues there now because you are not edifying yourself now. You are edifying the people. You are lifting up the people with the tongue of power and the tongue of courage and the tongue of conviction and the tongue that does wonders in the midst of the people. All that tongue, new tongues, new experience you have today in Jesus' name. Number five, reviving power to rekindle the saints. You have that power. And that power will be reviving. There are times in the family, you tell one of your children, oh, your brother is not here. Is he still sleeping? Go and wake him up. And she goes there and say, brother, wake up. The brother is still dreaming, he cannot hear anything. So the child comes back, Mama, he didn't wake up. There are times like that in the family of God. That person is sleeping, and the Lord has wake him up. You talk, you pray, you shout, you intercede, the man does not work up. The times you have a family, they're getting cold, they're lethargic, they're prayerless. Go wake them up. You go there and visit them. And you talk and talk and talk. You quote Bible left and right, Old Testament, New Testament. They are not working out. You say, Papa in heaven, I went to them, they are not working out. There are times to go to a Laodicean church. They're cold. They look warm. They're proud. They say we have everything we need. And the Lord said, go revive them. And you go there, and you preach your heart out. They're looking at you. Who does he think he is? They don't work up. And you go back to God. Papa, I try to wake them up. They're still the same lethargic, lukewarm, Laodicean church. We need reviving power to rekindle the saints. There'll be fire in your appearance. He maketh his ministers a flame of fire. 
just stay with you, abiding with you, and listening to you, the fire will begin to burn again in their lives. The power to wake those who are sleeping, to wake them up. Those who are discouraged, the power to encourage them. Those who say, I am through, I'm not going to do anything anymore. You get to them and they arise and they say, I'm ready now, I'm going to serve the Lord. That's the kind of power he wants to give us. But he says, wait, tarry in Jerusalem until you have the power from on high. Ezekiel 37. Ezekiel was called into the ministry. You remember chapter 3. Son of man, I have raised you up as a watchman over the children of Israel. Hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. From chapter 3 to 10 to 20 to 30 to 35, we now come to 37. The nation he was to minister to, they were dead, they were cold, they were disunited, they were scattered, bone from every bone. Anybody coming from chapter 3 to chapter 37 and the nation is still like this will be discouraged. I preach, I prophesy, no change. I prayed, I've interceded, no change. I've demonstrated and I've done everything in total, de in total dedication to the Lord, no change. I've been coming from milestone three, and now we get to milestone 37 and look at the condition of the nation. And the Lord said, don't stop. The breakthrough is coming now. He says, don't stop. The penetration of power is coming now. I have failed from chapter 3 to chapter 37. No, you have not failed. You are not a failure. Yeah, the people that are not responding just one step more you see revival and so the Lord commanded him he didn't say I tried that before it did not work this time from today I said from today what did it work before will work now. <laughs> Prophesy, proclaim, and speak unto them. <laughs> and he did that. Ezekiel 37 verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. You prophesy again. You proclaim again. You preach again. Forget the past. A new day is starting with a new man in a new ministry. Look at verse 8. 
in verse 8 and when I beheld lo the sinews and the, and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breast A successful ministry takes more than one message. A successful ministry takes more than one prayer. A successful ministry takes more than one day. Do it, do it, and do it again. He said there was no breath in them. And then in verse 10, in verse 9, in verse 9, it said, Then he said unto me, Keep your ears open to the Lord. He said unto me, He said, Prophesy to the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, from the four cardinal points, O breath, and breathe upon this lane, and they that they may live. Your congregation will live again. Your church will come on fire again. Your church will burn with vision again. Let your ears be opened unto the Lord. And now in verse 10. In verse 10 it says, so I prophesied. I don't know what the others are doing, but I prophesied. I don't know the people that are still in the dungeon of their discouragement, but I prophesied. I don't know the people that are giving up and they are saying, I can't do anything again, but I, I, I prophesied. I don't know the word that I say, I don't believe, I, I don't believe. I fail from chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 36 are bad enough. I don't believe them, I don't know them, but I prophesy. You will prophesy again. You will preach again. This new prophecy, this new preaching proclamation is going to be totally different from your third year of ministry. You're going to be a new man, a new woman, a new minister, a new ministry. Praise the Lord, your success has come. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breast came into them. And they lived. You will leave. Your people will leave. Your congregation will leave. And the ministry will leave again. And they stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Once again. The vision you had before, the dream you had before, the calling you had before, that God will use you to raise a mighty, great army. Today now is the beginning of the fulfillment. Power. Power. Penetrating power. Power. It's overcoming power. Power. Wonder walking power. Power. Explosive power. Power. Reviving power. 
you are the possessor of all the total power of the spirit from this day. Rise up and claim your right. Receive what the Lord has given you. He has spoken to you. And you are saying, yes, here I am. You have what he says you have. You can do what he says you can do. You will excel where he says you will excel. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Papa Mahovano D. 